Hello friends. I sit here amazed at the love and goodness that you have shown to me this week. I'm still reeling from the events that rocked our world and I know that you are as well. Many of you have shared your hearts with me and let me know that you too are reeling. But there are a few pieces of this heart that I want to share with you. Some things that I'd ask you to consider as we navigate these rough waters. Yes, I did stand before a couple that many of you know and affirm and bless their marriage. These are humans who have been a part of our community, who have made their home with us, who um, have asked nothing more than that each of us love and care for them in the same way that Jesus taught us to. My call to be their pastor is to be alongside them through that. I'm called to engage with many of you before you even darken the doors of our churches out in the community. I'm called to guide all of you on a path that leads you to better understand Jesus and the love that he has for you. I'm called to baptize you should you desire, to welcome you into membership, to confirm you, to support your families as they grow and they change. I'm called to encourage you into small group ministry and to walk alongside you as your health declines or the health of your parents or loved ones decline. I'm called to encourage you to give of your spiritual and your monetary gifts to support our congregations. As their pastor, I was emboldened to do all of those things and more, quite frankly. As people who intentionally engaged in the life of our congregation, it seemed both unkind and very hurtful to decline their request to also stand beside them as they committed their lives to one another. I'm asked to preside over a ton of same-sex weddings, nearly a dozen and a half last year, and I declined almost every single one of them because I had to prayerfully consider my call to walk alongside those people as their pastor. And if I'm not their pastor in all ways, then I won't stand before them on that day either. I am frustrated with the way that this process unfolded. I would have loved for the district superintendent or our district committee on ordained ministry to ask me to speak to the photo that they were viewing. I would have welcomed a chance to explain the situation that I found myself in, one that I knew was in threat of Book of Discipline reprimand, but for a charge of same-sex marriage, knowing all the while that I could have also been reprimanded based on the Book of Discipline for having denied marrying them because of a charge of discrimination. I would love to have asked questions of the district superintendent about other pastors in our district and in our conference who have also committed acts against the Book of Discipline and have been reprimanded in much lesser ways, if they were even reprimanded at all. But I wasn't able to speak to those things, not until after my credentials had already been removed. The research, the discussion, the directive from the Holston Conference Office, the vote, all of these happened without any communication from me. I had anticipated a different level of respect for gifts and graces and love that I've afforded St. Mark's and St. Elmo over these past years. I expected a heightened level of respect for you as congregations, for the love that you have for this denomination and for the hard work that you do to support the United Methodist Church by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. I prayed for respect for you as individuals, as beloved children of God, each of you made perfect in that image. Your love for your partner or your spouse is no less valuable than my love for Mike. I had prayed for that level of kindness through, that pro through this process. To those of you who are hurting or are scared or are sad 
I'm terribly sorry that this wound has been reopened for you. None of you deserve any additional hurt or to feel unsafe in these spaces where we have so often felt at home. While I knew that there were potential consequences, I also understand that many of you are upset with me. Your feelings are authentic and they are honest. Please know that there was nothing in my actions that intended to hurt any of you in the ways that I might have. Where we find ourselves today, however, is in this space of sadness and frustration and confusion. And friends, if you hear nothing else from this short little message, I want you to hear this. Don't leave. Don't walk away. Don't stop believing that St. Mark's and St. Elmo are the perfect places from which change can come. Some of you worried for me as I sat alongside you on Sunday morning when Randy delivered the news. Gary had asked me very lovingly why I would want to put myself in that emotional setting. Here's why. I'm asking you to stick with this. I'm asking you to stand in the midst of this storm and get blown around. I'm asking you to remain in these spaces of conflict and help us get this hurtful book of discipline changed once and for all. But I can't ask that of you if I can't model for you what that looks like. So here I am, also standing in the midst of the storm, getting blown around. When I returned from Charlottesville in August, I had to ask myself what I was willing to take on for the sake of this community and the call that God had given me that I've been asked to respond to. Friends, I'm willing to take on a deeper kindness and justice that Micah preached, to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly. Anytime Jesus lives inside of you, it results in justice. And we can't have peace without justice, without fairness, and without equity. When Jesus lives inside you, you are called to work for justice for those that can't work for it themselves. Or to at least work alongside them as we all work towards the same common goal. I love each and every one of you. The greatest gift that I have received is that of walking alongside you, knowing your hearts, and I'm so incredibly honored that you have trusted me with those relationships. Jesus' own prayer, the prayer we recite weekly, reminds us that Jesus commanded, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus is reminding us every time that we must align our earthly ethics with the providential design of God for our lives. That we must align our willingness to follow the heart of Christ with the energy of the Holy Spirit. That we must align our own bend toward justice with the words of Micah. That we must align our ability to provide forgiveness here on earth with the same ease with which God provides it to us. So friends, align yourselves for the work. Align yourselves to continue to help me to change this book that is hurtful and damaging to so many of you. See, the beautiful thing about St. Mark's is that it hasn't changed. St. Elmo hasn't changed. The same people that you sat beside last week who desperately want for all of our rights to be the same are the same people who will sit beside you this coming Sunday. I may no longer be in your pulpits, but I will be alongside you in this. Gary is one of the best and most important advocates you could ask for. Lean on him. Lean, but don't leave. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In St. Mark's as it is in heaven. At St. Elmo, as it is in heaven. In Chattanooga, as it is in heaven. In the United Methodist Church, as it is in heaven. And so be it in the Book of Discipline, as it is in heaven. I love you. Amen. <laughs>